Hello, and welcome to my explanation for how to install Squidlib as a library for your roguelike development. I'm going to do both Eclipse and NetBeans, and actually this will be the first time I've done it in Eclipse in a very long time, so you will all get to um, go along with me while I figure out how to do it in Eclipse, to see if I can remember. So we're looking right now at the GitHub page for the repository. This is my um, root directory on the GitHub page, so we can see uh, the Squidlib library itself, the Squidlib, lem <laughs> Squidlib demos deprecated uh, repo, which is still there because if you are using an older version of Squidlib, then the demos still all apply. Um, but since Squidlib 2.0 Alpha 1, the demos are all rolled into the source code in the actual Squidlib repo. And then Assault Fish, which I did for the 2014 7 day roguelike challenge. And it is currently using Squidlib 2.0 Alpha 1, but was at the time built with Squidlib 1.95. So there's some useful things to check out in both of those. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to the Squidlib repo itself. So here we can see the repo. Um, if you've got GitHub, you uh, can download it. If you wanted to make changes, you could branch it if you wanted to. Um, but most importantly, releases is where we want to go. Uh, there's two official releases, and because I tagged them in opposite order, um, actually Tommy tagged the second one for me in second order, but anyhow, version 2.0 alpha 1 is the current version to use. It is not um, compatible with libgdx, although the newer versions on the experimental branch of Squidlib are, uh, have libgdx back in it. 1.95 does use libgdx as well, so if you need libgdx you can either go to the older 1.95 version or you can look at the newest experimental branch, but if you do look at the experimental branch, then be sure you get one that says it's a working build. Um, I work on multiple computers, so I do push builds that won't compile on the experimental branch. Anything that's on the main branch, the master branch of Squidlib, is a functional compile. So, uh, this is the first alpha release of Squidlib 2.0. Release is self-stable and feature complete. That means that it's perfectly usable uh, for a game right now. Self-stable means that there are no uh, game-killing bugs or issues with uh, the core functionality being unstable in any way. There are some stub components that are not yet fully implemented or um, in a couple places there's some basically placeholder classes of things that are going to be implemented later and aren't implemented. Those cases are fully documented so if you're using the API while you're um, using the library you will see which parts are but it's it's actually pretty likely that you won't even run into those parts unless you're doing some of the more complex things. Um, so not a concern really. Like I said, I've made several seven-day roguelikes with um, Squidlib over over the years, and Assault Fish is a full version, you know, full feature roguelike made with uh, currently built against Squidlib 2.0 Alpha One. So we're gonna want to go ahead. Um, you can get all the sources and everything you want, but for this, we're gonna go ahead and just set it up as a library and not get any of the source code um, or branch or anything like that. All we're going to do is get the javadoc, the sources, and the library itself, the jars for all three of those, and then the two IDEs that I'm going to show you how to put together today. Uh, we'll be able to use those three documents um, internally to give you like the pop-up code completion and the pop-up document API documentation and all that. So. I'm going to go ahead and hit download on them. You can see up in my corner, they're all downloading to and the Java doc jar. Okay, so I got three things up there. So we should be good on loading loading up Squidlib. Um, I'm using version 2.0 Alpha 1, which does not have libgdx, because if you use the versions with libgdx, you also have to set up libgdx separately which there are a lot of tutorials for. It's kind of complex, but if you go through their steps, it's not too bad. But because 
there are tutorials for that step, so I'm going to show you just the steps for the, the Squidlib part of it. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and do NetBeans. So NetBeans is at netbeans.org. And NetBeans 8.0 is out. So we go to the download page here on the right hand side. There we are. So for NetBeans, uh, all we need is the basic Java SE one. It's got uh, NetBeans itself, basically, and then Java SE and Java FX. Um, I'm not using Java FX in this version of Squidlib. I was briefly, but not anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download. Um, except, let's see. So download. Download should start automatically. Saving. And then I actually already own, not own, I already have <laughs> NetBeans. Uh, don't own NetBeans, it's free. Um, so I already have NetBeans. So I want to show you where the download was, but I'm not actually going to install it. I already have it installed. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull it up right now. There's NetBeans. Um, when you first open it, you'll get a different little home screen. Um, but the putting the library together is the same functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a window to my downloads. And I'm actually doing this off screen uh, so that you can't see all of my funny stuff. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and copy those three files that we downloaded, the, the three jar files. I'm going to go ahead and copy those to somewhere to somewhere where um, they're going to be all off by themselves. I'm going to just call it libraries for now. So I've downloaded the three files. I've put them into a folder that I named libraries in my F directory, uh, which I named Hellebrick because when I got it, it was a really big drive. Um, it's only 500 gigs, so not so big by today's standards. Okay, so as we can see, the Java docs are the biggest file by far. The Squidlib jar itself is only half a meg. So even though some of the files in the Java docs are pretty big, um, when you actually go to distribute your program, uh, Squidlib doesn't have a very big footprint to it. Uh, if you use the sources from Squidlib, uh, directly, you could trim out the things you don't need, but I mean, really, it's not it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so we've got our folder for libraries um, in NetBeans. We're gonna go up to Tools, and then we go down to Libraries. Okay, so here with Libraries, we're gonna go ahead and just make a global library, um, and you've got your list of libraries already. You can see that here I have a libgdx library. Um, I don't have a Squidlib library already because I always just use directly with the sources. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom under this list just on the left and click on New Library. So New Library, I'm going to go ahead and just name it Squidlib uh, 2.0 uh, Alpha 1. That's nice to do so that if you switch libraries, like you could have a project with different versions running at the same time if there was some sort of version incompatibility or version difference that you cared about. Um, so it's kind of a nice way to make sure that you're actually using the library you want without only having one library at a time. And then just leave a library type to class libraries. Now um, we can look for the class path, the sources, and the Java doc. So class path is where it wants the one that's just the library.jar. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here. Alright, so I've moved the add jar folder. So here you can see F drive libraries uh, and then squidlib.jar and I just did that through the add jar folder. So sources. So this time I, I left it on because it pops up the same place it saw last. So now I want the one that's dash sources. And then last Java doc. And then the one that is dash Java doc. So done. So now we have a library. So just go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to start a new project. Um, do, 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 do. So it's just going to be a Java project and Java application. So we're going to call it 
square oh what am I doing so <laughs> Java application out of here and then we're gonna call it squid example and you can see I've got a projects directory that I just always do um I don't use a dedicated folder for the libraries um, you could and so this would be another method to use libraries without um, it's a little bit different so I guess you can look at the documentation for NetBeans if you want to see how to use it I don't do it um, but you may want to we're gonna go ahead and let it create a main class for us um, we'll go ahead and hit finish it's gonna create the project Doom. Um so I have not tweaked this version of NetBeans in submission yet so it still has the fake license header and local is my local computer account. We'll go ahead and turn that back off. There, erase the where it says local. Okay, so to do code application logic here, and just to show that the library is active, we'll go over here on the left side and go to libraries, open that little tab, go to javadoc, and then we can see we don't have any library yet, so this is just the standard JDK stuff. And then I can right click on libraries, I can say add library, and then I can just select from this list that we had before. I can just scroll down and there is squidlib, add library. So there's squidlib. So you can open it up and you can see like all the different things that are in here. So as an example, um, we're gonna go ahead and just make a new swing pane. Uh, swing pane. So you can see that swing pane is in the squid pony, squid grid GUI uh, section. Extends J layered pane, displays text and images in a grid pattern, supports basic animations. So, the reason that I had it uh, extend J layered pane is like some of the animations and stuff work on the J layered back end. You do not need to worry about it being a J layered pane or deal with it as one if you want. Um, when I do multiple swing panes uh, in order to get uh, like a transparency or overlay effect, I will put uh, a base J layered pane down and then put each swing pane in their own panes. So one of the nice things about swing is that it, it makes that kind of a layering uh, pretty easy at this point. So swing pane, yeah, so let's name it pane. We're gonna make it a new swing pane. Do, 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 so we can uh, make it through setting all of our height specifically or we can do uh, the one that where we don't have to send in a uh, text cell factory or an image cell map. So this one we have a little less control over what our output looks like, but we don't have to worry about some of the setup things. So this one's really nice for prototyping. So we're going to go ahead and do the one for prototyping. Let's say grid width. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and do like a 40 by 30 and then the cells themselves maybe uh, 14 by 23 let's call that good okay so we're gonna need a frame to show these in a standard Java J frame and J frame we're gonna go ahead and put a title in it example force <laughs> It live. I can't even spell my own. Okay, so there's the frame. Um, I'm gonna do two things here that I always do with the frames, which is set default close operation to exit on close, and I'm going to set its location relative to null. So setting its location relative to null makes it automatically center on whatever whatever monitor it would open on. Uh, a better long-term process would be to make it remember in like the properties file or through some other mechanism where the user at last had it open and reopen it to the location and size the user last had. But um, having it center on the screen is way better than having it open in the upper left corner, which is what happens if you don't do a set location uh, explicitly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go frame dot get content pane so the content pane is the container that sits just inside the frame where all the stuff actually gets put so when you add a component to a frame it actually falls through and gets added to the content pane but we're going to set the background color of this to black 
So I'm using scolor, which is the squidlib color library. It actually extends color, so anywhere you could use a color, you can use uh, the, the squid colors instead. I just drop right in. It likes the same in any of them. I just use the scolor to be consistent. And then that's going to set that. So frame dot set visible to true. Um, so let's see. So this is going to show the frame. Before I show the frame, because it's not going to have anything in it right now, I'm going to want to go and add the, um, the pane to this. So frame get content pane dot add pane frame dot pack and frame dot set visible. All right, so let's see if this worked. Hit the go button. It's building, it's thinking, it's crunching, and it did work. It threw it onto my other monitor. I'll go ahead and pull it over. Ta-da! Big black box that is taller than it is wide. Uh, it's taller than it is wide because even though we set the height to be less uh, cells, it still made those cells larger, so we ended up with more height. Um, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and do a quick loop to randomly... Um, to randomly go ahead and grab um, like a, I don't know, like I guess a, a fill for the for the pane. Um, go ahead and just do that up here. So x equals 0, x less than 40. Hard coding stuff, not a good idea in general, but for this little example. I'm already using the, the prototype version of the swing pane constructor, so uh, 30 and then y plus plus. Okay, um, and then find g. Okay, so I need an rng equals. So this is the random number generator. So my options here are to open it with no specific seed, um, an array of bytes as the seed, or a long integer as a seed. And I don't really care what the seed is right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and instantiate it with whatever seed <laughs> it does in the back end by itself. Um, I believe that the initial seed... So it uses a Mersenne twister, so it's actually uh, seeds itself a little bit differently than the regular random. Um, so anyhow, so now I've got a random. Now I can say pain dot put, and then I'm just gonna put solid blocks. So x y, and then I'm gonna say ran dot um, next boolean, and so the RNG. Uh, extends random, so it's a drop-in replacement for random, so the things that were available there are still available, such as next boolean. I'm going to do a ternary. Uh, let's do like chartreuse. Oh, that is a terrible color. <laughs> and um, let's see. Alice Blue? We'll do Alice Blue. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run that again. And then again, because I didn't um, save the user preferences it opened in the other window so no no output why very simply because once you've put content in you need to tell it to go ahead and refresh that content so that you're not doing draws all the time so that's a that's basically helps keep uh, tearing and other graphical issues from being a problem um, there we go Ta-da! So randomly placed <laughs> Chartreuse and Alice Blue together uh, in the grid and output. So I guess I've also shown you a uh, randomized forest algorithm. So there you go. Uh, and that is how to use uh, how to set up the Squidlib library in Java and then on NetBeans and just a really basic like how to get into prototyping. So uh, you can start working on things right from there and then continue exploring. So that's it for NetBeans. Let's go ahead and close that down.
And now for Eclipse, so our libraries, uh, we're going to point Eclipse to the same ones. I remember how Eclipse works. This is going to be a little more uh, fun for me, I guess. So Eclipse is at Eclipse.org. Um, we're going to go click on the download page up here on the right. And then Eclipse's options, Eclipse standard has things we don't need for this particular thing, such as Git, the marketplace client, the source code, source code for Eclipse, etc. Um, but the other one for Java developers has a CVS client and still a Git client XML editor, Maven integration. So I don't use any of that. I don't use, um, I use Git, but I don't use, uh, I use actually GitHub and I use GitHub's specific client. And then, and I also use Subversion, but I use Tortoise SVN. So I don't need any of that in my IDE. Um, but that's basically, you know, there's not really any good options for just like, hey, here is a basic Java. So we're going to go ahead and do Eclipse Standard 4.4. Um, I have 64 bit Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and get the 64 bit version. All right, so I'm in the United States. So it says, hey, get it from the United States download. Okay, done. I'm going to try to do the same setup on Eclipse that I did in NetBeans. So I'm going to try to do the same little uh, basic pop open a window and have it be all uh, fancy schmancy times uh, with some random random colors and stuff. So let's go ahead and have a new Java project. And we're going to name it Squid example um, so for we're going to use the default ex uh, the default location which is the F drive workspace is the drive that I told Eclipse to use as its default um, location to save things and what have you uh, it tried to default into my user drive but instead I've set it to this um, use an execution environment so we actually only need Java 7 for this um, for now, I would recommend using Java 7 instead of Java 8, just because some of the Open JDK Java 8 implementations aren't, they're not quite where I'd like to see them. Um, part of the reason I dropped Java FX support was because even though Java FX is part of the Java 8 standard, some of the, the JDKs still weren't, um, they weren't really supporting it. So then there was problems on like, uh, Linux distributions and stuff. So, if you're only going to uh, put your project out for Windows, then using JavaFX and uh, Java 8 is just fine. Um, the Oracle JDK, of course, works great for everything. Uh, let's see, create separate folders for sources and classes. Yep, we we'll want to leave that. So, that's the same as behavior as NetBeans to have subfolders, working sets we're not messing with. Um, well, compliance level 1.8. Yep, so that's all fine. So finish. Okay, so here we are. We have a project. We have a warning on the project already. Got the project warning B. All right, so before, remember, I looked at the libraries and we saw the JRE libraries. Same thing here. Uh, this JFXRT is actually that's JavaFX. It's interesting that even though I said Java 7, it still auto included the JavaFX from Java 7, but uh, otherwise you have to do things. Otherwise, I don't know. Let's, I'm going to hit. Oh, there's not even a go-to. I, I have no idea what that warning actually is. So, uh, I'm going to try to avoid judgment on how Eclipse does this, but of course I've made a judgment, and because I'm avoiding saying the judgment, you can probably guess what my judgment is. But, you go into Properties, Alt-Ender, and then the Build Path is where we're going to add the libraries. So, here we can see here's our actual source, um, and then the standard Java runtime libraries. I'm going to say add, I wonder if we can do the library thing, add library, um, select the library type, um, user library, user libraries. So I'm now making a library, it looks like, just like I, I did in NetBeans. We're going to call it squidlib 2.0 alpha 1. Uh, system library added to the boot class path. I don't think we want that. Um, we'll find out later. <laughs> All right, so add jars, same thing. So add external jars. In this case, I'm actually selecting, you can't see because it's off screen, but I'm selecting all three 
of the jars all at once. So there's not like a different tab for the sources in the Java doc. Bam. So you can see I've selected them and now I've got um, it looks like I can actually alright so I'm going to pull that off again and I'm, I'm going to go ahead yeah I can so I can add them separately I just need to do them like this so I don't want that one or that one Java doc location oops edit pull that to the side because I'm all sneaky whoa what did I just hit doc location Java doc. yeah that's oh because it's okay so it's got I'll pull this back and show you so there's Java doc URL uh, which is like an actual website for it, which is fine. Mine's archived in the jar files. So if you don't know, a jar is, is literally just a zip file. Um, so uh, mine's in an archive jar file. The wind's picked up outside. You can probably <laughs> hear that. Uh, so there's the Java doc. And bam, so file f libraries, file f libraries. That's interesting. All right, so no native library is attached to this one. Um, if you had done the libgdx install, you'd see stuff in the native library issue. Most of their their things run attached to native libraries, which is how they get a lot more um, smoothness out of animations and such than like Swing uh, or even JavaFX can give you. Okay, so it looks like I've got a library built. So now we're back to the use builder library. So this one's selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish, and there it is. All right, and it's showing up over here. All right, um, let's go ahead and expand this all out. Um, I'm going to try doing a little mini uh, mini one. I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to put my code up on the other screen from uh, NetBeans and uh, type it while I'm looking at it. So we're going to go ahead and do a new class icons being different throws me a little bit. Okay, so our class name is squid example. It is public. We're leaving all the rest of this. Super class. Um, basically just leaving everything as is. Go ahead and let that come up. Okay, so we don't get any default text, but I do want to let people know that I'm the author. So I will go ahead and add some Java docs here, and it grabbed, it knew I wanted that, it grabbed the same thing. So that's actually my username um, on my computer, so I'm the local computer. No surprises there. Okay, so I need a main class. Um, public static void, I can't spell void. Main string dot dot dot. Uh, uh, why did you do that? Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Listen in excitement while I fumble around with Eclipse doing weird unknown things. Okay, so same thing. Uh, swing pain, pain. We're going to make a new pain. We're going to use the prototyping uh, interface for it where we're going to just go ahead and manually put in the different uh, parameters we need to to make it the size we want it. Um, so... I did this on the fly before, so it may not have been obvious, but the imports, uh, you can click on this and you can sit, hit import swing pane. Um, the way that I did it in NetBeans, looks like you got to double click that here. The way I did it in NetBeans, it automatically did that import for us the, when I was doing the autocomplete on them. Um, and I believe Eclipse will do that too. So like if I'm doing RNG, um, yep, and so I hit control space and it went ahead and pulled the import up top. Um, and equals new RNG, no parameters, use whatever's default for int x. So a couple little loops. Uh, and again, we're hard coding it for prototyping purposes only. Um, you can see if you look at my code, even for like SquidLib and stuff, that I typically give things um, good names and use, uh, you know, parameters that are static at the top or whatever if you want to change them for width and height and things like that so I don't want you to think my code style is always this rough shot but for prototyping alright so pane dot alright so we've got the same general sort of an interface that NetBeans did we get uh, the different things that we can have uh, come up as our autocomplete and we get the javadoc for it 
So put is what we want, and there's a whole bunch of different puts, the way that Squidlib works. Um, there's a whole bunch of overload, overloads for put so that you can get uh, what you want in pretty easily. You don't have to guess at the variable names. This is one of the cases where something like uh, JavaScript, where you don't have to have specific overloads, might be a little more useful, but uh, we're not using JavaScript for this. So we want to put in uh, x, comma, y, comma, let's see. So we're going to do the next Boolean thing. Um, so a trinary statement. Again, uh, let's do different colors this time. Let's do some kind of a, uh, let's do pumpkin, and maybe something that starts with, is there any X's? Nope. <laughs> Why is, uh, here we go, uh, young bamboo. All right, so now we've got some random stuff coming up. Um, we need to refresh that so that the, um, so that it'll actually do the drawing on the back end. Um, that way we haven't, you know, Again, the reason that I, that the refresh command is even in there is so that there's not drawing time wasted when you might just rewrite things. So normally you would call refresh right before, either right before you were going to do uh, a display of the panel on the actual project, or if you had just finished doing a bunch of writing to it and you knew you weren't going to write for a while. Like for example, if you uh, laid out the map and you knew the map was going to stay that way you might call refresh before, you know, when you're done with the drawing rather than right before the display. So kind of up to you how you want to handle that. Um, so same thing with the J-frames. Um, uh, whoops. J-frame. And I want this one. And I want example for squid lib. Um, do, 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 do. So set default close operation jframe dot exit. If you're working with the content pane a lot, actually, it's not a bad idea to set it to an actual variable. So set background color, s color dot black. So the, yeah, up, up top there. Okay, so then we're black. Um, frame dot get content pane dot add and then I want to add the the swing pane so if I didn't do the frame dot get content pane dot add and just did frame dot add it would fall through to the content pane um, I prefer to still keep the get content pane so it's clear that I am explicitly putting it in that location and that I know it's going to that location relying on fallback behavior makes code in general a little harder to, to read and uh, then later if other people are reading it they don't know if the person writing it was actually relying on the fallback code or if it was just accidentally working for them. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're interested in presenting yourself as someone who actually knew what they were doing while they were programming, um, doing the full thing can be nice. In some cases it might be too wordy. So there's the balance as always. All right, let's see if that runs for us. I'm gonna hit run, uh, select resources to save. Yes, always save resources before launching, okay. Um, yep, so popped open on my other window. There we go. That is really hideous to look at. So I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we've created. This is your um, burning swamp forest uh, generator that we've created here. So uh, that is how we pulled up the libraries in both NetBeans and Eclipse. I'm going to go ahead and pull them back really quick just for a quick comparison. So here's the NetBeans one and NetBeans two build the library itself, we went to tools, and then libraries, and then built the library. We also could have done it the way that we did it in Eclipse, which was we could have right-clicked on the, uh, the project itself, gone to set configuration, customize, and then when we're in customization here, we can go to libraries on the categories, and from here we can add libraries. So add library, so we see it's already in there, but we can say add library, while we're in the libraries, we can hit create, we can make the library, we can go through the process and then add it in. Um, that's basically the same process as Eclipse. So in Eclipse, where we've got our project, we go to properties here at the bottom. So I right clicked on that, we go to properties at the bottom. And then once properties are open, that was a lot of flashes it just gave us. Once it's already open, um, you go to Java build path 
and then libraries and then add library so you can directly add jars to it if you want to um, you can do that in NetBeans too I won't cover how at the moment but so add library is the button to push and then use your libraries and then same thing as we saw in that that drop down in NetBeans we can either select it if we already have it um, or we can open up the user libraries interface make a new one find the files for it etc so I hope this has been useful for you